Hello everyone, we are going to continue our Vision Transformer series and in this video we are covering the Swing Transformer, a general purpose transformer model for computer vision. So far we have covered three Vision Transformer models. First we started with the original VIT which splits the input image to a sequence of 16 by 16 patches. The vanilla VIT works well when it is trained on very large datasets but on mid-sized datasets, its performance is lower than CNN models. After that, we covered two variants called DATE and Tokens to Tokens VIT that their objective was to make VIT work well even when it is trained on mid-sized datasets. In this video, we cover Swing Transformer, which tries to build a general purpose backbone for computer vision. This paper recognizes the challenges for using transformers in computer vision. The first challenge is that visual tokens vary significantly in scale, which means that when you scale an image, the visual tokens usually change a lot. Therefore, it is necessary to build multi-scale representations. And the second challenge is related to the computational complexity of attention mechanism, especially for high-resolution images. Therefore, Swing Transformer addresses these challenges with these two ideas. First, building a hierarchical representations using transformers, and secondly, a shifted window-based self-attention. First, let's discuss the computational complexity of vision transformers. Given this input image, we split the image into a sequence of n patches according to the vanilla VIT. Then, Vanilla VIT uses global attention, which has quadratic computational and memory complexity for computing the attention scores using multi head self-attention. One approach to reduce the computational complexity is to replace global attention with window-based local attention. In that case, the MSA is only performed within each window as shown in the right. Using this window-based self-attention, the computational complexity is reduced to linear with respect to the number of tokens n. However, the drawback is that now we only consider the interactions within local windows. So this approach cannot model relationships of tokens across different windows, and thereby the modeling power is reduced. To resolve this limitation of window-based attention, the authors combine window-based attention with a shifted window attention in consecutive layers. The shifted window provides some overlap between the regular windows that are not shifted in the preceding layer. So combining these two attention models, every visual tokens will be able to interact with other tokens either directly if they are within the same window or indirectly with one or more intermediaries. Furthermore, the authors used another trick to facilitate the memory access and that is to share the key set for all the queries within the same window. This technique further lowers the latency. Uh, yet another side effect of shifted windows is that in it increases the number of windows since the windows on the sides are broken in half. While this is not a major problem, but the authors also provided a solution using cyclic shifting for efficient batch implementation. Now moving to the main building block of the model architecture, which is a swing transformer block composed of two transformer layers. The first layer uses regular window-based attention, so the uh, MSA block is denoted by WMSA. And the second layer is using a shifted window-based attention, so it is denoted by SWMSA. These two consecutive layers form a single swing transformer block and they provide an efficient attention that is linear with respect to the number of tokens while enabling long range interactions with the overlaps between windows. Moving on to the second idea of the paper to build a hierarchical multi-scale feature representations. This is achieved by a patch merging layer that acts as a downsampling layer for reducing the sequence length. Patch merging is performed in two steps. First, for each local neighborhood of size 2x2 two two tokens, we concatenate the visual tokens, so we start with a tensor of size 2x2x2, two by two by C, and after concatenation, we get a tensor of size 4C. Then, we apply a linear layer to reduce the size from 4C to 2C, that is in step 2. 
We repeat these two steps for all non-overlapping neighbors as shown here. So if the input size has uh, h by w by c, we get an output of size h over 2, w over 2 times 2c. Here is the architecture of Swing Transformer. Starting with the input image of size h by w by 3, first we split that into 2 by 2 patches, which are flattened and used directly as visual tokens. Then these tokens are fed to a stack of Swing Transformer blocks composed in uh, four stages. In the first stage, the number of tokens and the channel dimension is fixed. But from stage two onwards, we apply patch merging that reduces the number of tokens in half in each dimension and instead doubles the number of channels. So with this patch merging layer, we can design various architectures similar to what we used to do with CNN architectures. Furthermore, note that the Swing Transformer uses relative position embedding. We have previously de dedicated a full video on relative position embedding, so please feel free to watch that video with the link in the description. The authors have designed four models with different sizes. Swing T for tiny, Swing S for small, Swing B for base, and finally Swing L for large. The difference between these architectures is the number of channels C in the first layer and the number of swing transformer blocks in stage 3. Note that the number of swing transformer blocks in stage 1, 2, and 4 are always the same among different models. Now let's see the experiments conducted by the authors. Recall that the objective of this paper is to build a general purpose backbone for vision problems. So the authors have applied the model for solving classification, object detection, as well as semantic segmentation and they have compared the performance of Swing Transformer with CNNs as well as other VIT-based models that we covered in previous videos. For image classification, they have conducted two sets of experiments. In the first set, they train models from scratch on ImageNet 1K. But in the second set of experiments, they pre-train models on a larger ImageNet 22000 dataset which has 22,000 classes and 14.2 million samples. This table shows the results of the first experiment. As we have previously discussed, the vanilla VIT does not do well on mid-sized datasets. So that's why it shows the worst performance in this table. But as you can see, Swing Transformer shows comparable performance to CongNet models and even slightly better than date models that have similar model size. The next experiment is object detection for which they use COCO 2017 dataset. Table A compares the performance of Swing Transformer with ResNet 50 using different de detection frameworks. And as you can see, Swing Transformer shows performance gains using all detection methods. In table B, the detection framework is fixed to the framework in Mask or CNN and instead comparing different backbones like date, ResNext, and Swin models. In this case also, Swin T and Swin B outperform their counterparts with similar model sizes. And the final experiment is on semantic segmentation using ADE 20K dataset, comparing CalvNet-based models and other transformer models using different methods. For Swin models, they used UPERNET framework and the results show that Swin L model pre-trained on ImageNet 22K outperforms the previous best model, Setter, in both validation and test score. So in this video, we covered Swing Transformer as a general purpose backbone for computer vision. This is a powerful model and it's used as the backbone in the modern object detection models such as the Grounding Dino, which we'll cover in future. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.